Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Monday, August 31st, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight. Changes with, with background checks will, will help at the margin, but I wouldn't expect that to have big impacts on the rate of violent crime in the country. A gun grabber admits that expanded background checks do little and ignores reports of hammers killing more people than assault rifles. Then, could you flunk out of college for using the words male or female? And a call to all patriots. So join us this September 16th and 17th for what I believe will be the final money bomb that InfoWars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening. Because as Mahatma Gandhi famously said, First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, coming up, we're going to look at the latest revelations in the Clinton email scandal. Also, we're going to look back on the life of Patriot filmmaker William Lewis, who died over the weekend. And we're going to get Californians' opinions on the recent uh, capture of Nessie. You can't wait to see that one. But first, score one for the social justice warriors over the weekend. That's right. Here it is out of the University of Texas. Texas removes Jefferson Davis and Woodrow Wilson statues. Statue removal follows nationwide campaign to take down historical items deemed racist. Following the tragic shooting of the black church in Charleston, South Carolina last June, a nationwide campaign has begun to remove statues and other historical items deemed racist. Uh, just last month, a resolution to dig up Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest remains from a public park was passed by the Memphis, Tennessee City Council. That's right. People are looking for any and every uh, reason just to say that's racist we got to get rid of it we're going to start just erasing history anytime somebody feels uncomfortable about it or is deemed racist now what's interesting is jefferson davis was flanked uh by woodrow wilson now it's interesting wilson was a democrat who was known for praising the kkk and he was moved merely to maintain symmetry on the wall but let's look at woodrow wilson he signed the federal reserve act on december 23rd 1913 which you could say has now created a whole nation, 300 million plus and counting debt slaves. That's right. Because the Federal Reserve is able to print money out of thin air, give it to big banks at zero interest, the big banks are then able to go in and buy up everybody's property, uh, call in loans whenever they feel like it, basically keep everyone under their thumb. We are not all now living as debt slaves, and you could thank Woodrow Wilson for that, but no outcry from that, just outcry from the, the president of the Confederacy who was elected by the Confederacy to be their president. Yes, he did own slaves, but let's take a look at some other presidents who own slaves. Some on this list might surprise you, and some of them may not. Here's the uh, list. And this information comes from Jubilo, the Emancipation Century. And there's about uh, 13 presidents listed here. Let's start off with the list. Number one, George Washington, the father of our country. Then the third president, Thomas Jefferson. The fourth, James Madison. Uh, moving on in the number five spot, James Monroe. Then Andrew Jackson and Martin Van Buren. Now we go to number seven on the list. He was our ninth president, William Henry Harrison. Then John Tyler, who was the 10th president, James K. Polk, the 11th president, Zachary Taylor, the 12th. Uh, then the 15th president, James Buchanan. 
Uh, no, the 17th president, Andrew Johnson, who was right before Lincoln in the Civil War. And then number 18 on the list, which I was surprised to see, Ulysses S. Grant. That's right. The head of the Confederacy, the Confederate, uh, sorry, the head of the Union, the Union general, the guy who ended the Civil War was also a slave owner before he became the general of the Union Army. So you may want to think about when you decide Black Lives Matter people, social justice warriors who want to go out there and hide history and pretend it didn't happen and try to cover it up and have statues removed, you never know where this could go to. So this was the guy who effectively, you could say, ended slavery in the United States, even though it was already on its way out. Now, where is this all going? Here's an article from Mark Slavo. Got white privilege? College students flunked for using oppressive and hateful language. This is where it goes to. It goes to the language, from statues to language. Campus reform reported on political correctness gone too far. Multiple professors at Washington State University have explicitly told students their grades will suffer if they use terms such as illegal alien, male, and female, or if they fail to defer to non-white students. According to the syllabus for Selena Lester Brinkus, Women and Popular Culture class, students uh, risk a failing grade if they use any common descriptors that Brickus considers oppressive and hateful language. Here we go to Professor Rebecca Fa uh, Fowler's syllabus. Students will lose one point every time they use the word illegal alien or illegals rather than the preferred term undocumented migrants, immigrants, or persons throughout the course. Fowler says students will come to recognize how white privilege functions in everyday social structures and institutions. <laughs> We're going to talk about racism. According to MTV's Francesca Ramsey, it's impossible for black people to be racist. Ramsey claims that the dictionary definition of racism, the hatred or intolerance of another race, isn't the true meaning of racism. Because it's just the dictionary. Really? Isn't that convenient? So it's okay for social justice warriors to claim, just look at the dictionary definition when it comes to feminism. All you morons who are too stupid to look up the definition of feminism. With no mention of the fact that radical feminism in practice has virtually nothing to do with the dictionary definition of feminism, but suddenly different rules apply when you're talking about racism. Ramsey says black people can't be racist towards white people, only prejudiced. Reverse racism is not a thing. First off, that has no legal basis whatsoever. According to the 1968 Civil Rights Act and the 1994 Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, a racially motivated hate crime carries the same punishment no matter the race of the perpetrator or the victim. Secondly, she claims it's only racism if it's backed by a major institution. But when a person of color discriminates or stereotypes a white person because of their race, in the United States, they don't have the institutional power to back them up and say that those feelings are okay. Oh, you mean like affirmative action? Major institutions of learning giving African Americans college places based on their skin color and not their academic achievement in favor of whites. Is that racist? Goldsmiths University, a major institution, refusing to fire student diversity officer Bahar Mustafa after she banned white people from attending a college event. Is that racist? Black on white crime, the major institution of media routinely ignoring or downplaying the fact that black people are 27 times more likely to attack white people than vice versa, while collectively blaming all white people when one nutcase goes on a rampage. Is that racist? Only white people can be racist. Really? The black people are racist, or the most racist people than any other race on this planet. Was it not racist when Bryce Williams shot dead Alison Parker live on air in order to create what he called a race war. Was it not racist when a gang of black radicals called for lynching whites and killing cops just days before deputy Darren Goforth was gunned down in cold blood? Was it not racist when the major institution of media refused to identify the suspect as black? Was it not racist when a black couple beat this white woman while yelling, wrong hood, bitch? Bitch, wrong hood, bitch. Wrong hood, bitch. Wrong hood, bitch. Is it not racist for the major institution, which is MTV, to endlessly make TV shows and YouTube videos lecturing white people about how racist they are? Seriously, this channel is called MTV News. Music Television News. Yet over half of the previous 24 videos 
have been about racism. Plus, it's completely inaccurate to claim that only major institutions wield power in today's society. Twitter outrage mobs wield huge power. We see them getting people fired and destroying people's lives all the time. And almost every time that happens, it's white people being publicly shamed for saying something politically incorrect. Good people can unintentionally say and do racist things. But not if you're killing white people to try and start a race war. No, that's not racist at all, is it? Or just wind up supporting racist institutions and practices without even realizing it. Oh, you mean like Black Lives Matter, right? Supporters of which routinely call for murdering white people. So do you agree with Malcolm X that white people should be killed? Is that why you're here? You damn Malcolm right I do! So yeah, you do need to die. Colorblindness is not gonna fix racism. It's a good idea in theory, but ignoring race is not gonna solve racism. Race isn't the problem. Treating people differently based on race is the problem. So, treating people differently based on race is part of the problem. But being colorblind and treating everyone equally, regardless of race, is still racist. What the fuck? Or people of color facing harsher prison sentences for petty crimes in comparison to white criminals. Except the study that she's talking about found that racial disparity in sentences wasn't a result of federal judges being racist. As Larry Elder documents, differences in conviction and sentencing rates by race are due to differences in the gravity of the criminal offences, prior records, and other legal variables. Look, I'm not saying that black people don't face racial discrimination from institutions and society. They clearly do. But then to claim that it's impossible for people of colour to be racist, based on a new rule that you've conveniently created, which is contradicted by a plethora of examples, is patently stupid. This video again illustrates how social justice warriors don't believe in equality. Treating a black person the same way you treat a white person is not good enough. You're still racist. And even if you're not intentionally being racist, and you're not aware of the fact that social justice warriors think that merely being born white is racist, and that you just want to see all humans as one race, you're still racist. Prejudice and racism aren't the same thing. So yeah, you do need to die. Check me out on Twitter, at Prison Planet. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Paul Joseph Watson for Infowars.com. And it's not just free speech that they're going after. People like this are going to start renaming public places, uh, national monuments, everything is going to get renamed. Here's an article from my way. Alaska-bound Obama makes waves by renaming Mount McKinley. In a major show of solidarity, Obama announced on the eve of his trip to Alaska that his administration is changing the name of North America's tallest peak, Mount McKinley, to Denali, its traditional Athabascan name. That's right. There's not going to be any more of anything that you knew in the past. It will all be changed under this new guise of political correctness. And here's John Baum with how Obama wants to also destroy ancient world monuments. ISIS has flattened yet another document of human history. In war, there are essentially three ways that historic monuments are destroyed, either in a hail of gunfire as it's exchanged by warring soldiers or demolished by bombs dropped from the air, or more recently, by a Frankenstein monster of religious zealots arrogantly expressing their domination of a captured area and destruction of idols. Hundreds of casualties in air raids on Syrian market and the media is demonizing the Syrian government, saying, how dare they? It looks like a bunch of civilians got killed because Al-Qaeda, ISIS, as they always do, base their head base in the city they've taken over. This is admitted in the middle of the market because there's buildings within the market. Syria has now turned the tide against the rebels two years ago. Now they've had the tur tide turned against them. The rebels hold more than 60% of the country. They're taking major towns and cities every week. Russia is basically starting to withdraw support from Syria. It looks like it's going to fall to Al-Qaeda. And they are going to murder every Christian and Jew they get their hands on. And then you'll hear our media go, gee, Syria so failed. They're killing everyone. It's so sad. Just like Libya. Recently, Syrian scholar Khalid al-Assad was beat.